They better do not have any downtime. So, what is this, man? Lawliot didn't manage to make the warden work on Echo against Reprisal. <laughs> Moon didn't manage to make it work. Who was it in the end that made it work? It's Bane. Bane. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, there's, there's only one true hope in that Warcraft universe. <laughs> it's Bane. No one would have ever imagined that Bane would do so great here. Dude, it, it's his like score the tourists. Card? It's uh, 3 to 2 at the moment. 3 to 2 and the map score of 0. Alright, he's still got good chances. Yeah, if he wins this, this is awesome for him. Then he would be 4-2. Yeah. Can you please join the game, game, bros? Can you please join the game? Sorry. Alright, alright, alright. Don't yell at me. Yeah, but you have to be professional at least once. <laughs> Sorry. I, I stopped the jokes. Alright, so who's Bane gonna be playing next? If he wins here, as we say, he has a good chance. So afterwards, it's gonna be against Minyuk, doable. Yeah. And, and then Moon. against Moon. Yeah, both of the games that are coming up for him, easiest cut cards of his life. He just needs to win this one. Okay, we are ready. Uh, da, 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 da. I gotta do the in game overlay, but of course, that's no problem. Alright, the countdown is starting. It's gonna be. We missed the first map, which seems to have been quite the crazy map. So, guys, we're heading into this game with the underdog, Baney, going up against Reprisal. Reprisal is already through. He has five maps, uh, five wins, excuse me, under his belt. So, unless some kind of math miracle happens, he is through. He's almost, almost 100% through already. So, he's sitting pretty and feeling. Pretty safe, I would assume. Is this maybe the reason why perhaps he underestimated Baney? Is this the reason why he lost on Echo Isles to Baney, again, the underdog, before he defeated Moon on Echo and he defeated Lawliot? But Baney was able to take that map with the Warden first, and the Warden only, actually. At the end, I think she was level 9. Yeah. Well, this best of three is not over yet. We are heading into the second map, which is Secret Valley. True, true Secret Rally it is. We're gonna see Baney spawn at the bottom half of that and then the top half we're gonna see Reprisal yet again. It's blue against red, blue human player against red Knight of. Is it going to be a Warden yet again? The score in the best of three is 1-0, right? We haven't missed like a yes. map. It's 1-0. So it's 1-0 for Baney. That is also good for his map score since you told us that his map score is horrible at the moment. Um, improving that would definitely be good for him, but it's going to be a demon hunter against an Archmage, nothing like too crazy. But it will all come down if Reprisal decides to go for that natural expansion creep spot with like six militias. And if the demon hunter is going there like immediately, or if he decides to stay around and at least get the item from the Gnoll Overseer, I would usually like to see the demon hunter just jumping out of the altar of Elders running toward that location. Yeah, but it seems like Night Elves really prefer leveling that Demon Hunter right away. A Wisp is going across the map to scout. But you can't really wait for the Archmage to run into a certain direction. I think you have to run right over if you want to deal some damage. But if you're wrong on the guess, that's of course a little bit annoying. You get nothing from the Demon Hunter when you don't go for that. And if then the human player in return goes for uh, the Gnolls just regularly, then you're kind of far behind. But Wisp sees it immediately. Archmage is going for the natural, as we've seen so many times. He detonates, Water Elemental is hurt, but Demon Hunter is going to be creeping. Yeah, but what I what I was thinking about is like just creep this while you go there with the demon hunter, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. You just pull like two or three wisp, repairing that ancient of war, and you can easily establish that creeping while you go into the location and be aggressive there. Second wisp is coming to the party, not using the detonate, because he cannot really achieve that much there. And yeah, reprisal doing a fairly good job of creeping that without taking too much damage. Going for the Ogre Magi here is going to pay some more attention to that one since we want to know what the item is and it's going to be a class of attack plus nine and this is definitely a great item to start things with and he's going to expand or he's just getting like one round of gold and sending them back to the main base and happy uh, baney i mean making a big mistake in the early game he last hit 
one of the assassins with the Ancient of War. So now he's quite far away from level 2 and getting there is not going to be as easy as he would like it to be as Reprisal is being very aggressive and indeed the peons or the peasants rather were just getting, gathering a bit of gold sacks and they're retreating back home as he's tacking to tier 2 already. Trying to get the archer but turns out to be a little bit difficult but with the claws of attack he will be able to but there is Shadow Melt! Whoa! Just when it turned night time, Baney was looking at the clock there in the top of the inner face and keeps his one archer alive now going to the shop getting the boots and the archmage might be in a bit of trouble but of course there's two shops here this is not echo isles after all so it should be fine yeah definitely a mistake of the deny there but we have seen moon the guy who's playing this game for like it feels like 25 years and still killing creeps with the ancient of war so that can definitely happen. He's now checking on that goblin, uh, on that fountain of health here to actually see if the one player went that way to heal up his Archmage because he's fairly low. Uh, the archers on the other side waking up the creeps. Now the creeps go havoc on that Archmage, but actually not exchanging all too many hits since the archer died there and was tanking up most of the damage. Should have actually waited a little bit longer to regenerate some more HP. Then the archer would have survived and he would still have that one. In the end, he now gets some Huntresses, since he was adding that Huntress Hall fairly early, getting the Ultra Vision upgrade as well as a second Huntress. One Huntress is surrounded, there is dust on the side here of Reprisal, and he will be able to keep the surround alive, and the first Huntress dies to Footman, and this is something that you don't want to experience as a Knight of Player. Nice quick surround there by Reprisal, and finally he's showing the micro that I was expecting from him, that I was looking forward to seeing. The Footman does not escape because Boots of Speed, Demon Hunter, pretty damn fast. This should have been level 2 had he done the creeping correctly, but it's not. He's still level 1, but the Hunters here helped tremendously. He may have lost one, but one is still alive, and I guess more are coming. Yes, we see more in production from the Ancient of War. To the left, Tier 2 is be close to completion on both sides and it's rifleman so i guess we don't see the n by now almost infamous uh, one base style of uh, mortar teams and casters only it's crazy baney is expanding at the same time he just lost one huntress he adds like two more to his army right now it's demon hunter and two huntresses 25 supply for baney not adding any more moon worlds. he's on two moon worlds. he will not have more so he cannot really fall back into like four moon worlds that you usually have. And now he's setting up an expansion. This is somewhat odd, but maybe you need to play a little bit odd in order to overcome what's about to happen here. But this time it's not being uh, it's not going to be this infamous mortars, casters, a lot of kiting, upgraded mortar teams with that or even without the shrapnel actually doing a lot of damage. This time it's this old fashioned rifleman push that Sky was so famous for and that he made so popular against Night Elf. But usually Night Elf players are able to deal with that very efficiently because they all figured it out, like at least on the very top level, people just know how to counter it, know what kind of stuff they need to pull off in order to make this uh, Rifleman army disappear in no time. So we're gonna have like two Ancient of Lores, he will stay on tier two, he's adding that Nature's Blessing upgrade, Tree of Life, 60% done, no second hero yet for Baney. 22 out of 30 supply, finally adding another Moonwell. And yeah, I don't know, like usually you need all the gold that you have in units, in tech, but I don't see how you can survive that Rifleman push if you are being pushed and you set up an expansion into play. Yeah, exactly, and he still has those Huntresses that I can't see being decent at all against the upgraded Rifleman and the Focus Fire coming from the AM Watcher Elementals and the Naga. Demon Hunter is gonna be close to level 3 very soon and should be level 3 when the push hits. But yeah, most of the time we think that he should be investing all of his resources into defense, but this expansion attempt seems to be fairly odd. Reprisal is not up at 50, doesn't want to go pushing just yet. His Archmage is not level 3, but he's going to have it really soon by the looks of it. Now Huntresses are coming in, and Snares are a danger here. He really doesn't want to lose these Huntresses already. The only opening that I can see how he can win that game is like, he goes around the human player and tries to go inside that main base and kill the gold line and just try to go for like this merry-go-around whenever he goes like for expo or main base you just try to run inside his main base and try to lower his economy since he's on one gold mine it will hurt him way more than it hurts you and yeah but so far with the two huntresses and only the demon hunter on the battlefield i don't really see how this can work 
Finally, we're gonna see two Dryads being added. No second hero yet. One Footman will die, but Footmans are not crucial. But on the other hand, of course, that level 3 is kind of important on the Demon Hunter. Is he keeping it to, to a solo hero? The Tree of Life is closing in and he's actually enrooting that gold mine. But I don't know. I don't know. All right, he's going for the counterattack right away. The thing you were suggesting, your suggestion for... Well, the only way pretty much you said for the Night Elf to win this, and the base entrance is there. He can get into the main, and there's no Arcane Tower here, there's no Guard Tower, there's Militia, but there is Breath of Fire against this. At the same time, Reprisal has found the Expo, and is probably most likely going to be able to cancel this Expo if the Night Elf doesn't TP back to defend. And if he TPs back, I don't know that he can win this fight. But the Militia, man, they're taking a heavy beating, losing so many of his workers in the main base. But I guess this is a really good trade for him so far. Yeah, so far the trade is not as good for Mr. Bane. Of course, he tries to kill that main hall, but that keep is not dying anytime soon. Panda trying to kill a few more units, and now he's even retreating and going back. Not sure what he wants to accomplish there. Of course, he wants to kill the reinforcements, the one rifleman, as well as on the other side, the one priest, to lower the amount of units. He's setting up a tree of life on the other side. He sticks to tier two drides only against the rifleman and one priest. He's lowering the amount of units, which is good. But in the end, I'm not sure if he can make that work. Reprisal keeps on opening the base here on Secret Valley. Is this just a mistake or is this intentional by him? Um, it's not the I first time is... we, we saw this before against uh, yeah. another I think this is a mistake. Uh, the peasants are being slaughtered once again on the right side. Tree of Life halfway done. Second expansion. But in the main, again, the Night Elf is losing Moonwell after Moonwell. Only a single one remaining. So this is turning into a weird base trade scenario. But Reprisal doesn't have a single peasant. No, that's not true. Actually, in the middle of the map, we have four peasants still alive. And now he's trying to go for the keep. And at some point, this will fall. Is it going to be before the Tree of Ages, though? Yeah, I think it will probably... Yeah, it will definitely fall. But he got two attack upgrades, but the Nature's Blessing is doing a fairly good job to keep the tree alive, so... Mm, is he, he He needs to Tom Paul at some point. He cannot lose that keep. I'm not sure if he really wants to risk losing that keep. I think and he, he actually... Is, he yeah, he, he, he lets it, it go. Like. Is the Knight of going to TP home to try to defend, or is it going to let, let his own tree die as well? Seems like the good choice, because he has another Tree of Life in the making. And yeah, both main buildings have fallen. But Bainey doesn't have to wait for too much longer to have income again, as he is also re-expanding a, what is this, second time, third time, in the top left with another Tree of Life. And he has buildings spread out, spread across the entire map, Whereas for Reprisal, there's only buildings in the main. There is peasants with his main army where he could maybe create a farm or something. Yeah, but, he's, uh, he's creating a farm close to the gold mine oh yeah, right now is. in Baney's main base. But yeah, I think this favors Baney like heavily. Yeah, I think so too. There's only going to be one single spot on the map where human uh, buildings are going to be, which is exactly that one single farm. And Baney is going to be spread out everywhere. Yeah, Benny is going to spread like a plague. He will set up like two bases and he's already getting the, like the moonwalls that he will need. So if that tree of life finishes in the left side on the left side, he will be at 33 out of 40 supply. Then he can get some more wisp. And with that wisp, he can actually start mining again, setting up more bases. And with like two bases running, the moment he is like letting go of that farm, the only building that he still got is the moment that like he will just storm in with the remaining drives and stuff and kill that one. We saw Reprisal be successful in base race scenarios earlier today on Echo Eyes against the Warden, played by Moon. He took that game fairly convincingly, but Happy uh, Baney is probably going to be getting the 2-0 here against Reprisal. Uh, I wouldn't be so sure yet, because Reprisal is now hitting an important timing window where he can take out one of the Expos. He's actually approaching that one, setting up a second farm and... For some reason, Baney is in the completely wrong spot here. He should actually be close to the two uh, two farms, and he is locating himself to the fight here. I don't know really. I don't really know why, because he will never be able to take that fight. And he should just go for that snipe on the last remaining buildings. If he takes out the two farms on the left hand side, that would be a great great start into that. 
um, we're gonna see that Reprisal is already revealed while Bane is not revealed and yeah, Reprisal doesn't know about the second expo, but one of his workers is waiting there and constructing a farm there right now. So he will spot that one. There are still three more Moon Worlds and a Huntress Hall that Reprisal is aware of. The Moon Worlds are still in the dark, so it's still a blind spot for him. But yeah, I think Bane should have killed the, the like the like Blacksmith and the two farms and should have then after that killed like uh, the remaining farms that he constructed and the, that he is already aware of. Like Ancient of War is working into a location that is good. The Tree of Life actually cancelled uh, one of that farms as well. And wow, yeah, like, what, what a crazy game. I think he only has one footman, uh, one peasant left, right? The one yeah, that is walling himself into the trees right now. So he can't build create buildings anywhere else but now reprisal is killing the last tree of life and i think you're right i may have been too early to call this game because this tree is gonna die and then happy uh Bainey, excuse me i keep calling him happy is gonna only have to kill a few more farms but the problem is riflemen are protecting this farm and can he kill it with the rifleman support we're gonna find out right now here he comes this farm of course doesn't have much health he's repairing it the Riflemen are coming in, Breath of Fire is hitting, but not hitting too hard, only level 1. And the farm is still alive. No trees of life, gathering income anywhere at the moment. Weird stalemate. What do you do here in this situation? What a weird game, but I think the last farm that Reprisal constructed could have been like even deeper inside that forest. And then you just send like two units in to block it off and Nidaf will never be able to reach it, reach it anymore. That would have been even more crazy. The Dryads dispelling the water elements from the other side of the rocks. <laughs> what a game! That's, that's one thing, you could keep your army here and send your water elementals to kill the remaining Nidal bases, but there's of course uh, Abolish Magic against this, so Reprisal might be able to def defend his last farm. But with Hit and Run, with the Fountain's healing, over time, shouldn't the damage be enough? And the question is, how does he move across the map to kill the Moonwells on the right side? Yeah, Bainey just needs to creep a little for a little more, I guess. He needs to gather some more experience from the water elementals, because it's just like free XP and you have the mana nonetheless. He's doing that right now. Get rid of the buildings and then just make it count to that very last building. Get maybe even try to get their panda up to level, I don't know, five if this is possible. Because there is like a lot of red spots. You can creep the orange spot close to the moon well still. And even the fountains are not being crept, so there is still like what an odd game, to say the yeah. least. Very rarely we see this kind of uh, game unfolding in this weird scenario, but it's already the second time today, or maybe the third time even. I think today is uh, quite a lot of uh, base races compared to usual, but now Reprisal feels the need to move across the map to find his opponent's hero and huntresses, but that opens up the opportunity for the Dryads to attack the farm. They don't deal much damage to it, but over time they will kill it. And this looks kind of like a Hail Mary from Reprisal, but not like the smartest decision. Yeah, he's losing his uh, patience, I guess. Because he knows that here, it feels but... kind of desperate at this uh, at this stage. I think he should have taken that worker with him and maybe sell a few more of his items. Like maybe the big invo potion, he doesn't really need that one. And then he could construct some more buildings, probably. And now the last worker is dead. This is key. Uh, and the last worker was also stuck behind the farm. He would have had to cut down the trees first to get out again. Which I think he was he trying to work on. He wins 2-0. Don't fuck. He might be losing his army here, his hunters, maybe even his heroes. But does it matter? I really don't think so. Ancient of War is here at the farm and along with the Dryads. This is the last building and this will be the defeat. And actually, Bainey wins it 2-0 against Reprisal. This guy continues... To surprise. It's Neo, absolutely, say something. It's absolutely unbelievable. This was beyond Moon style. I mean, he knew that there was so much pressure coming onto him, but he just expands. And then he saw, oh, maybe this expansion will not come through. I'll expand just the second time. And that actually won him the game, plus some nice decisions that he made. Bainey is by far the surprise of today. By the way, remind, 2-0 moon. What? Yeah. Uh, all right, that means moon is at 3-3 now? Yes. 
How did he play against Focus? Did, did they play already? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. It's like Remind so me. many people are at 3-3 now. It's crazy. Like, Bane is at 4-3 now. Reprisal at 5-2. Like, what the hell? This will be so close for the guys actually making it for the third and fourth spot, I guess. Okay, Moon and Focus will be our next game. Um, I guess we need some time to update everything because there's so much going on. Oh, Mr. Blue Tail is uh, giving me the updated sheets here. So I can just copy paste that into our calculation. Um, so far it looks awesome for Reprisal and Baney. And then behind that is Focus with 3 to 2. And then we have four players who are 3 3. That is Moon, Lolliet, Lin, and Remind. Only mi it, it just looks bad for Min. You can check. I think check is definitely out. Um, for Min, it doesn't look that good. But this is just. It's crazy. If it's Benny crazy. wins one more game, he's through. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, actually. Unbelievable. Like Benny, everybody man. is beating everybody besides Reprisal is like playing godlike and then losing to Benny. Whoa. It's crazy. Right. Like... So we're going to be updating uh, the scores, the standings and everything. We have a few minutes here of downtime before the next game continues. So we take a short break. You guys stay tuned. Thanks all for tuning in. And the WCA APEC qualifier continues in a few moments.